Ay, grabe talaga yung panahon niya yun. Kahit yung simpleng ulan, maaari natin napama. Hi! Tumos yun ang mabahan ako, Chad. Dahil nandito ako. Today, let us discuss the different mitigation strategies the prevention to loss of lives and properties prevention. But first, let us know what is mitigation. Mitigation involves the process or a result of making something less severe, painful, dangerous, or damaging. Mitigation involves actions that reduces the risk of life or property damages from a potentially dangerous incident. During a calamity, it is inevitable that lives and properties are being damaged by disasters. But through these mitigation strategies, this can be lessened or even prevented. There are several programs that intensify a nation's pattern mitigation capabilities. These include the following steps. First is the protection for schools and hospitals. All new schools and hospitals should be located and constructed to ensure that high hazard areas are avoided and that special provisions are made to reduce the potential for damage by natural hazards. Second is the adoption of non-structural measures. Businesses and households should adopt non-structural mitigation measures to mitigate casualties from natural hazard and property damage. Third is the incorporation of mitigation into new development. Local jurisdictions should ensure that new developments are located, designed, and built to resist natural hazards. They should use hazard and risk assessment information, land use plans, and zoning regulations to limit the development of hazard-prone areas. Compatible uses of floodplains and other hazardous areas should be incorporated into local planning and zoning so that losses are reduced. Number 4. Protection of Cultural Properties Mitigation preparation and intervention will include preservation of libraries, landmarks, historic buildings, artworks, and other cultural resources. Number 5. Protection of Natural Resources The mitigation plans and protection measures included in the disaster response plans should identify particularly valuable natural resources such as endangered species of wildlife, fish, and plants. Number 6. Government Leadership of Mitigation Implementation Government at all levels should set an example by requiring that new facilities that they fund, regulate, or lease be designed, built, and located in accordance with modern building codes and sound. Mitigation Training Training programs should be developed and offered with a focus on contemporary challenges associated with mitigation implementation. Hazard-specific research Recent disasters showed the advantages of mitigation activities, thus emphasizing the need for research to improve mitigation practices. There are also actions or plans to protect human lives and properties. For example, developing and rehearsing a family disaster plan. Include a communications plan in case disaster occurring and you are separated with your family. Putting an emergency supplies together, one set for your home and another for your car. Another note, know how to shut off your appliances and take the resources you need in hand. Duplicate your important documents, and last but not the least, make a digital inventory of your personal belongings. Ngunit sa oras ng sakuna, ano nga ba ang mga dapat natin gawin? Good question! Listen carefully as we discuss the different precautionary measures for a disaster. For instance, a landslide is or will occur. But first, let us know what is a landslide. A landslide is the movement of rock, earth, or debris down a slope section of land. Landslides are caused by rain, earthquakes, 
volcanoes, or other factors that make the slope unstable. Before a landslide, number one, be familiar with your surroundings, watch for any changes to certain objects' presence or positions. Number two, avoid open stormwater drainage and runoff as these areas are likely to receive debris and soil from higher elevations, especially when there is a storm or heavy rainfall. Number three, be updated on news regarding to the condition of your area. Number four, be aware of the disaster plans of your local government. Number five, learn and participate in, an, in emergency response and the evacuation plans for your community. During a landslide, number one, be attentive to unusual, such as cracking objects, moving debris, and rolling boulders. Number two, stay away from the path of debris. Number three, stay alert and awake. Number four, stay on elevated and sturdy area. Avoid low-lying areas and steep slopes. And number five, if escape is not possible, curl into a tight ball and protect your head. Find a structure that can serve to protect you from the flow of debris. After a landslide, number one, stay away from a slide area as there is still danger of more landslides. Number two, Listen for the latest emergency information. Number three, follow warnings and instructions from the local government. Number four, if the landslide is caused by rainfall, watch out for flooding as it will follow the same path taken by the debris flow. Number four, if the landslide is caused by rainfall, watch out for flooding as it will follow the same path taken by the debris flow. Number five, check for injured or trapped people near the slide and flooding as it will follow other potential hazards. Report this immediately to the rescuers or authorities.